Imagine a world where machines could think. Well, luckily enough, you don't have to because we have artificial intelligence, or AI, right at our fingertips. Think of the last time um, autocorrect spell checked a message on your phone. Even if on your way here, Google Maps warned you about the traffic. Or maybe a few days ago, you saw a personalized ad online that kind of freaked you out because it seemed to know exactly the product you were thinking of buying, like two days ago. These are all super common applications of artificial intelligence in our day-to-day -day lives. And we can define AI as the ability of program machines, or computers as we call them, to make informed decisions given data and information, just like a human. Essentially, it's a computer that thinks by making these decisions. It doesn't yet feel, it's not sentient, but it is objectively smart. Now, our world is being overcome by a digital revolution with AI at the very forefront. In fact, the rate of technological development is so rapid that our economy, our policies, our educational systems, and especially our workforce is struggling to keep up. As a young aspiring tech innovator and a student in this generation, I'm struggling too. But the thing is, we can't afford to be lagging behind. We can't afford to be behind the technological revolution that's taking over all of our futures. And just to examine the global impact of AI on our society and all of us in this room, let's take a look at the workforce and what it means for that. So millions of jobs and careers are threatened to be overcome by automation. I'm sure you've heard of this by now. Maybe it's even a fear that you yourself have regarding your own work and your own life. And rightfully so, because by 2025, 85 million jobs are going to be taken over by AI. That's an estimate, of course, but it's still 85 million career paths fundamentally changed. However, at the same time, as humans and machines learn to work hand in hand, 97 million more jobs are going to open up. This means 97 million unique careers driven by AI are going to require the knowledge and skills to use AI and employ it in all of our fields of interest. But above the ability to be aware of AI and simply use it because we have to is the ability to create it and mobilize it. How do we do that? With computer science. Computer science is simply the driving force behind all technology, a programmatic language that creates AI and drives it to do exactly what it does. Therefore, treating computer science as foundational education is now necessary just as core as math or reading is for any of us to equip my generation, the rising generation, with the skills we need to dictate a technological future. But how do we do this? How do we treat computer science and AI as any sort of foundational education? Not all of us are interested. We all have diverse backgrounds, experiences, and aspirations for the future. Well, it's a good time to talk about my own journey with it. So I started with computer science in robotics during middle school. And ever since then, I found my passion for AI research and biologically inspired computing. Since then, I've had many opportunities to do research in the field with industry professionals in school, take some really cool courses, and really find my own interest for AI and computer science and the beauty of it all, really. But for the purposes of this talk, I'll talk about what exactly computer science offers us as students but most importantly, all of you as individuals, as a core subject. So number one, it's super important to understand that computer science is distinct from digital literacy. Tech literacy is awareness, tolerance, and usage. And yes, it is important, but we have to move beyond that to actual development and a deeper understanding of the technology that we use every single day. Furthermore, computer science inspires creativity. I consider myself an artist among many other things, and computer science really is an art of painting with logic and creative problem solving if you think of it that way. Additionally, it's inherently collaborative. We work together to solve problems, and me and my peers can be active agents in a digital world. Now, going back to the workforce I talked about a few minutes ago, I mentioned that 97 million jobs are opening up because of AI and the new digital revolution. This means that I have a million jobs and their respective employers are looking for technical skills regarding computer science and using AI to hire a future workforce. And this is yet another way we're lagging behind because 40% of employees right now are going to require technical reskilling to be able to thrive in a workforce of AI, of automation, and of computer science. And the prominent skill groups they're looking for, let me tell you, lateral analysis, critical thinking, and creative problem solving reported by the World Economic Forum. Sound familiar? It really should, because this is exactly what I just told you computer science has offered me and so many people as a foundational educational subject. 
Now, you might be wondering why this issue all arises. And the issue is because, with, because of the drastic lack of accessibility and participation in computer science, the danger of a skill gap in the future workforce is mounting and incredibly dangerous and detrimental to our progress as a society. And it all arises from a fundamental problem in our educational system. So let's talk education. Across the US, access to computer science is a prevalent issue, with less than 50% of American high schools even having any sort of computer science curriculum offered. In Oregon, though, luckily enough, 86.6% .6 of Oregon high school students have an access to computer science course. Yet, only 7.2% are actually enrolled. I just told you how important it is to have these technical skills now and for the future. So how can we inspire genuine participation? Well, think about it this way. A common contested issue is that we can't implement computer science because not everyone's interested. It doesn't align with all of our interests, all of our passions. But I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. Imagine, for example, in humanities, if we were taught about how AI plays an instrumental role in the criminal justice system. It's being used in 30 to 40 states across the nation in jurisdictions, in employing lawyers, and helping judges make decisions about crime recidivation. In biology, we could be taught about AI's amazing role in medicine. It's revolutionizing robotic surgeries, gene therapies, diagnosis. And even in history, we can be taught about AI's role in modern political campaigns. It's being used for media filtering, terrible ad campaigns, even things that polarize our society on a day-to-day -day basis. The point is that AI and computer science are so beautiful and fluid and versatile across all subjects, from the liberal arts to STEM and everywhere in between. In fact, this sort of education is culturally responsive, right? It grounds ourselves in the present and all of our passions, but looks ahead to our inevitable role in a technological future. Now, AI, of course, is incredibly powerful, as I'm sure you've picked up on by now. But just like a human, it's susceptible to a certain bias. Now, bias is a scary word. It's a human word, first of all. And machine bias is a very technical subject. So let's break it down with a little example. Compass is an example of an AI tool that's being used in 40 states and jurisdictions right now as a way to help judges and law courts make decisions about criminals that are likely to commit crime again in the future. It's presented with images of a defendant along with criminal history and personal information. And the AI is asked to make a decision about how dangerous the person is, how likely they are to commit a crime again in the future. I'll tell you a bit about these two individuals on the screen here. The man on the left was charged with one attempt of resisting arrest without violence. The man on the right was charged with one attempt of burglary. So take a moment and think about who, who would you, you would assign the higher risk score. And once you've got that, this is what the AI actually assigned. And I hope this comes as a shock to you, and it really should. Because in the beginning, I told you that AI is supposed to be smart and it's supposed to be objective. But this outcome is neither of those things. So what's happening? Take a look at this data set now. What do you notice? Hopefully it jumps out to you that a lot of the population here is white and Caucasian. This means it's visually unrepresentative of people of color. And this is a huge problem because AI learns from its environment and the information that we feed it. If it's learning from a biased data set, if it's learning with a biased algorithm, and if it's being used inappropriately, like maybe they shouldn't, these tools shouldn't even be used in the first place, then the outcome is a discriminatory, inaccurate result, like you just saw with Compass. But there is one thing missing to this diagram, and it's us as human developers. If we ourselves, behind all of these technologies, data sets, algorithms, are not representative of the diverse perspectives and ideas and backgrounds in society, how can we expect AI to be any different? How can we expect it to have an equitable outcome? The thing is, we really can't. And this unrepresentation is prevalent even in academia in computer science. In fact, in 2021, only 30.6% of all AP computer science students were women of any race. Only 16% were Hispanic, and only a mere 6% were black. On the other hand, 43% of these computer science students were white of 2021. Now, this is clearly a huge issue. The promoting diversity in technology stems far beyond just having it for the sake of diversity. We need to promote diverse integration, which is partnership and power and influence of minority populations, so we're able to have these equitable outcomes. 
This is why having computer science as a foundational core, accessible to everyone, human-centered, and culturally relevant is so incredibly important. Now, I'm pro you're probably wondering by now, well, what am I gonna do about any of this? And I hope I've inspired you in some way, shape, or form to maybe even stay informed, learn more about the role that technology and AI plays in your own career, your own life, on a personal or professional basis. Maybe even how you can start researching more about AI, take some computer science courses yourselves, things like that, to just stay informed and be able to be mobilized for the technological future that looms above us. Additionally, advocacy is incredibly important. Because of student advocacy, the Oregon Department of Education is mobilizing a $5 million grant and fund to implement computer science curricula across all private and public schools in Oregon by 2025. This initiative did not come out of nowhere. It came from advocacy and student voice. We are working with teams of curriculum developers, K through 12 students, people from Intel and beyond to create these curriculums and implement it across all these schools to address the issues I've just talked to you about. And most importantly, in AI, in technology development, and especially in computer science, we need you. There is a space for everybody. And I strongly urge you to find yours. Thank you.